how's it going? I'm Ina Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so on the last one, I said that her, the title for this one would be Passion Reignited, and I know exactly what I mean when I'm talking about that, and it is something I know if you've watched a lot of my recent vlogs, you've probably got a good idea of where I'm going with this. <laughs> this is talking about uh, basically what happened um, throughout the course of last year, and yes, I'm almost definitely going to be referencing Hi in the Boy again. <laughs> And my current projects again, um, so I do apologise, but I know I keep retreading old ground, but I think in this case, I think in this case, I kind of want to be a bit more focused about the whole thing and why it's something that's become so important to what I've been talking about and, and, and in regards to, to my vlogging and this channel. And I think, I don't think I'd realised how out of touch with the writer part of myself I'd become over the last few years and there's something I've sort of touched on before when I sort of talked about you know all the health problems and all the personal stuff that I, I had going on and the fact that you know I, I had at one point um, a few years ago been really determined to sort of get my writing career kick-started um, with a few, you know, hiccups and, and bad choices and then my stuff just like throwing itself at me just caused me to kind of for a little while go, okay, just writing is enough. Um and then in, and my writing pace slowed down a lot because, you know, at the point in time that I started university, up until the point in time where you know, I essentially started working for the company that I'm working now. Actually, it was a little bit after that, to be fair. I'm not, I'm not blaming the company that I'm working for now. It was, was all when the life stuff started like, piling on me, rather than, you know, working um, itself, because I had been doing the same amount of writing with my previous job. So <laughs> um, it definitely wasn't, you know, working in and of itself. It was all the life stuff that was sort of piling on top of me at the time, and all the health stuff. So I mean, that was piling on top of me at the time. Um, I went from writing a chapter per project and I, you know, at university was working on multiple projects at the same time. I'm still not really doing that anymore, but, you know, it was, I did so much writing. I did so much writing. And then very gradually it slipped down to less and less and less. And at the beginning of the year, it might have been two or three sentences a day that I was writing for the project that I was working on, which is why the project felt like it was moving so slowly and not really going anywhere and I wasn't really invested in it. I mean, yes, there were times where I would write a little bit more than that, but certainly if, it was, you know, if I had a day off and I had a sudden brainwave about it, but most of the time it's just ticking it over, ticking it over, ticking it over, ticking it over. And, you know, considering I was somebody who prides myself on always writing every single day, um, yeah, I was always writing every single day, but I wasn't writing with that same kind of passion, that same kind of determination, that same kind of motivation that I'd been writing with before. Um, I mean, even, even Echo, and, and Echo's not a bad book, I feel the style, you know, the, the very slow pace of style that I, that I wrote it in, it's, it's not a bad book, it's, you know, my, my talent still <laughs> remained, <laughs> fortunately. Um, and I think it's one of those projects where there was a lot more enthusiasm and passion about writing it. Um, because I was writing it um, on commission from from the lovely Jade, so there was a reason for me to write it. There was motivation there. There was a definite story that I wanted to tell. So that helped. So there's, there's definitely been projects over the years, um, you know, since things are sort of my writing pace sort of slowed down, that I did give the, the proper time and attention for. And as I said, Echo is one of them. And you know, getting Echo out there and, and published and everything else um, certainly, you know, reminded me. Um, of the fact that I am a writer, which <laughs> I know it sounds weird, um, but it really, and, that, and in all seriousness, it really wasn't until my last, my, I say my last, it wasn't until the point in time when I was like, okay, I'm going to get High and a Boy ready for publishing this summer, let's start editing it and editing it and editing it and editing it until we get there, um, until it's, you know, absolutely as good as I can possibly get it um 
that things really changed and I suddenly realised I hadn't been writing for like a year. Yes, I'd been writing, but I hadn't really been writing for a long time. And um, working the way that I'm working now, yes, there is a slight obsessiveness about it. <laughs> And yes, there are times where, you know, I do have to take a long break because I'm sort of feeling not burnt out necessarily, but my brain sort of stutters and, and it's almost, you know, it, it kind of, it knows where it wants to go, but it just needs a little bit of a break and a little bit of a rest, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I don't mind giving it that. But, you know, that's such such a different thing from from how I've been treating my writing skills for the last couple of years, which has been like, eh, two or three sentences enough, right? <laughs> to, oh my God, if I could just spend all my time doing this and then taking a break and then doing this. I mean, I've even got a keyboard for my phone so that I can write and work because I cloud, how? OneDrive. <laughs> I, I wonder, uh, my, you know, my stories are in OneDrive, so I can access it as long as I've got the right program to access it with. Um, so, yeah, it's that that is a complete change, and it's even more passionate than you know it was when I was doing a chapter per project per day. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, my younger brother and I were having conversation. Um, in his car um, over the Christmas when he was driving me up so we could spend time with my mum and my, my old brother and, and his sisters. Um, and he was like, I haven't heard you talk this passionately about your writing in a long time. And I was like, yeah, I, I know, I feel like I, you know, regained something that, you know, I, I'd forgotten almost was, was there. And in a lot of ways, it's made me so much more determined, so much more determined to, to get to where I want to with, with my writing, whether it's finding the right book and getting the right hit at the right time, or just keep producing work after work after work after work until everything starts selling at a reasonable pace. And, you know, my idea is to publish another book this year and then publish another book next year. And it, you know, but at the pace that I'm going, it might well be that I'm publishing one book. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, news! Um, but you know, however it, it sort of ends up going, however it, it sort of ends up being, it's still this is the most passionate I've been about writing for a long time. And maybe these aren't exactly the stories I thought I would be telling. I, you know, I have no idea these stories were even in me um, before. I started editing Hyena Boy and you know the the passion that's there, the, the potential in these stories that is there and, and the little things that I keep learning and, and keep going back and editing and, and, and the details and, and everything. It's just there is something about this collection of stories and about these characters that just connect with me in a way that is just I know I know from doing this that I'm supposed to be a writer I know from doing this that I'm supposed to tell these stories and I've not felt like that really like that about my writing for a long time and yeah okay maybe once these projects are done um I not might not necessarily get the same sort of intense strive for it again but I've got a whole backload of stories <laughs> a whole backload of stories that I can get ready and, and maybe from doing that find that passion again and, and you know it's all these stories that I've told and all these stories that I've still to tell and all this sort of potential it's I've never felt more like a writer than I do now it's so frustrating that I'm not where I wanted to be at this point in my life with my writing career and I know that's you know no fault of my own it's you know life stuff life stuff happens and life stuff will always happen and life stuff will always make things a lot more difficult than you would like them to be and it will always happen and will always do whatever the hell it wants because that's just life that's just how life works um you have to kind of either accept that or you know 
it will, you know, whatever. <laughs> Words. <laughs> um, but the fact that I have been able to refine my absolute love of storytelling and the fact that, you know, I'm this passionate about it again can't be a bad thing. It really can't be a bad thing. And yeah, maybe I don't necessarily know 100% whether or not I'm ever going to make it, whether I'm ever going to get to where I want to be, but I really want to get there in a way that I, I don't even think I was as determined at the end of university to sort of get there. But I feel, I feel like it's something I need now. Um, whereas before it was just something I wanted, I feel like I need to be an author that people are reading. Um, so maybe I'm not the most profound writer out there, maybe I don't have anything new to tell people, but I do have stories to tell. And I want to tell those stories, and I want people to read those stories. More than anything, I want people to read those stories. It is so much more important to me that people can read those stories than it necessarily is for me to be well known or rich because I am a person who has written those stories. It's more important that people read them and enjoy them because, yeah, that's the kind of writer that I want to be, the kind of writer that people enjoy reading and uh, <laughs> I am so glad that I have found my love for, for writing again and that it is okay he's very obsessive <laughs> but that's okay because that's just who I am and that I think is just who I've always been it's just been lost it's been lost under a whole 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 baggage of misery and health and life stuff but I really want this and I will find a way of making it happen one way or another I will get to where I want to go and it will be glorious <laughs> so okay the proposed title for next week's vlog is best laid plans um I'm not entirely sure whether this is going to be focused more on writing or more on personal stuff or a little bit of a mixture of both. I might aim for it to be a little bit of a mixture of both um, because I can think of ways I can take this in both directions at one way. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have found this one interesting. Yeah, I know, I know, I keep harping on about my newfound reignited passion for writing, but um, it is something that means a lot to me at the moment, and my current projects mean a lot to me at the moment. My Una Boy means a lot to me at the moment. So, having a forum where I can just keep being fangirly and weird about my own writing is <laughs> not a bad thing. <laughs> um, Alright, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're all looking forward to the next one, and I will see you next time. See ya! <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!